Greetings, everyone. Today we're going to explore factoring a quadratic equation, but today we're only going to look at greatest common factor and group factoring. All right, quick review here. Remember that factoring is undoing the process of multiplication. So you guys know so well how to distribute. And so today what we're going to work on is undoing that, going back to taking the factor out. And then let's take a look at multiplying um, two binomials. So remembering that we need to FOIL those values and then combine those like terms. And so today our goal is we're going to have three to four terms and we want to backtrack to get two binomials. All right, the foldable that you'll want for these notes looks like this. Remember, it's the multi-tabs that we put together in class. We're going to take care of today the first three tabs. So let's start off with that first one, factor. What does it mean? We have two bulleted points we're going to write. You've got lots of room, so you can even write really big. The first idea, we're going to find out what was originally multiplied to create the expression. So again, we're undoing the multiplication. Now, keep in mind, um, if you, you have factored in the past, you factored in Algebra 1, you factored in Geometry, and we're going to spend time factoring in Algebra 2. And this is um, one of those sort of must-have skills um, for every math class. So make sure that if you struggle or need some additional support at any time, Make sure to reach out. All right, let's start off with greatest common factoring, GCF. Out of everything in this foldable and that we're going to do with factoring, this is probably the piece that you're most comfortable with and familiar with. So let's just add a little definition up at the top. What is the largest number and or variables that can be divided out of each term in the expression? So keep in mind, we're going to be dividing out a number, the largest possible number, not just any number. We're going to divide out possibly one variable, two variables, possibly squared cubed variables. So we're really going to amp it up with the amount of information in that GCF. So let's start off with example one here. So I'm looking, I have three terms. I always break it down into what number is a factor of 6, 12, and 18. Now there's a couple of factors, but I want the largest factor, which is 6. And then I identify any variables. Well, I could take x out of the first two, but not the last term. So 6 is my GCF, and when I perform that division, that is the expression that I have left in parentheses. Let's take a look at example two. Number-wise, I can divide out a seven out of both of these. Technically, this is x to the first, right? So the most I can take out is the least exponent. So I'm dividing out seven x to the first. 14 divided by seven is two. x to the fourth over x to the first is x to the third. So how do I know that? So just a refresher, um, if you struggle with that, it's like I have four x's over one. If I get rid of a set of one, I have three left over, okay? And then I'm bringing down the subtraction sign. And believe it or not here, I have a lot of students make silly mistakes. Anything divided by itself is one, okay? I have some students that just end it. They're like, oh, that's gone. No, we have to keep a one there. So just slow down, take a moment to think about that if you see the same thing twice. Let's take a look at example three. First thing, I need a common factor of 28, 16, and 8. My brain looks at the 8 and says, what are the factors of 8? Does 8 fit into 16? Yes. 28? No. All right, the next factor of 8 would be 4. 4 fits into all of those, so let's go with 4. The least exponent on my x is 1, so that's the most I can divide out. The least exponent on my y values is 1, so that is the most I can divide out. So my common, greatest common factor is 4xy. Now let's divide. 28 divided by 4. What do we got there? 7. x squared divided by x to the first leaves me with a single x. And the y over y is 1. I don't need to write a 1. That would 
It wouldn't make sense because 1 times 7 is 7. So let's drop down the plus sign. 16 divided by 4, 4. X to the fifth divided by X leaves me with four X's. Y to the first, Y to the first, that's a one. So I don't need to identify that since I already have a term. Plus eight divided by four is two. Ooh, the X's are taken care of. Y squared over Y1 is a single Y value. All right, now we zoomed through GCF pretty quick. It's what we're most familiar with. So we're gonna jump into grouping. Now a couple bullets about grouping. Grouping occurs when you have four terms. It's a very systematic way to factor. And I'm pairing it with GCF because it, you're literally factoring out of GCF three times. Um, and it's also very systematic, meaning you kind of do the same thing and the same steps over and over, which makes it easier to be honest. So the first step is you're gonna group everything into pairs. So two terms, two terms. From each of those pairs, you're gonna factor out a GCF. Now, when you do that, you're gonna have another common factor that you're gonna factor out. And now this is the step, the nice thing is halfway through this process, you're gonna know if you're on the right track. Let me walk you through using an example. So first step, I like to check that it's in standard form, by the way. It doesn't have to be in standard form, but it tends to make it easier. So you're welcome to rearrange the terms, um, ideally standard form. So meaning cubed, squared, x, constant. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to group two terms, the left two and the right two. Just pair them up. You're going to factor out a GCF from each group, and I'm going to color coordinate this a little bit actually, so I'm going to start with this group. My GCF of these two pieces would be 2 and the lowest x exponents x squared. So I have 2x squared. If I divide that out, um, I arrive at a single x plus sign 12 divided by 2 is 6. That becomes a 1. Alright, so just GCF work. Let's look at the second set. Now you'll notice this is unique, they both have a negative. So sometimes you got a, what I call play the sign game. So I see two negatives, so I should take out a negative. Um, I can divide out a value of five, but I cannot divide out any variables. So if I divide out a negative five, I would have an X, a negative divided by negative is positive, 30 divided by five, six. Now take a look, here's the unique piece that I starred. I have the same thing twice. So if I divide each term by an eight, an X plus six, excuse me, right? If I divide that out of both pieces, then what's remaining becomes the second binomial. So see, I have a two X squared and a minus five remaining, and that gets paired up for the second binomial. So here's what's nice. If you don't get the same thing twice, then you don't have a common factor to divide out one more time. And you'll know, hey, I gotta stop. Something's not right. Let's take a look at the next one. Same process. It's in standard form. I'm gonna pair up the first two. I can divide out a 2x squared. When I divide out a 2x squared, I have an x plus two remaining. Okay, do you see where that came from? X cubed over X is X. Excuse me, X cubed over X squared is X. Four divided by two is two. X squared is simplified to one. Let's take a look at the second set. Now we chose this example because what's my GCF here? I don't see an obvious one, but I have to. You have to in grouping divide something out. And so if you can't divide out anything, you can divide out a positive one. If I divide out a positive one, I have an x plus two remaining, right? Because dividing by one, I still have the same binomial. Let's take a look. I have the same thing twice, perfect. If I divide out an x plus two, that's my GCF. And then what's remaining becomes my second binomial. So I have a binomial times a binomial. Now here's what's really cool, you guys. If you're ever nervous on an assessment, you know how to multiply well. Multiply that out and make sure you arrive back at the question. If you do that, 
you know you're right. Let's take a look at this example three. Now I'm dealing with two variables. It's the same process. You can rearrange if you'd like. If you feel like rearranging would make it easier, go for it. With two variables, the standard form idea isn't necessary. So I'm just going to keep it the way it is. I'm going to group the first two. I see I have a common factor of 3, and it looks like I can divide out an x. So 3x, if I divide that out, would leave me with 4x plus 3y. See, those x's would simplify to 1. Let's try it again on the second set. Ooh, they both have negatives, so I'm going to divide out a negative. Um, looks like I can only divide out a 1. And it looks like I can divide out a y would be common. So negative 1y. If I divide that out, I have 4x. Negative divided by negative positive. 3 divided by 1. And y squared divided by y. All right, let's take a look. Did I get the same thing twice? Yes, that is what I need. So if I divide out my common factor of 4x plus 3, then what's remaining is my second binomial. So take a look at that. All of these answers are binomials. That should always happen. Grouping is nice and organized and systematic. This happens every time. Here's the thing. If you don't get the same factor twice in that second step, something's wrong because I'm not going to give you in my class something that won't factor by grouping. So enjoy that. Let that rule help you because it's going to happen every time. So for today, ta today's task, we're only going to work on grouping and GCF. So make sure that you check out Google Classroom, see what your tasks are. I do have other videos that go through the whole foldable. This one just split it up. So if you need to seek out other videos on YouTube, please do so. Keep me updated. Let me know if you have any questions. And until next time, have a good one.